we're maybe five blocks from Skid Row, which is, you know, 60, 70,000 homeless people a night. I mean, there's homeless encampments around our church that we outreach to. You know, we have homeless congregants that come. We have a guy in our church that he feels a need for homeless ministry. And so he literally goes to Skid Row, finds the worst off person in Skid Row and asks them, hey, can I give you a day away from here? And he takes them to his house. He gives them a shower. He buys brand new clothes, gives them to him. Gives he gave him new Jordans the last time, oh, wow. and then brings them to brings that guy to church with him, and it introduces him to me and prays with him. He has he has a TikTok. He just put up a video of it, which was so cool. But then he just says, "How do you feel? How, you know how that? Do you want to do this again? Do you want to come back with me?" It, it, it's one thing to complain about the darkness we're in, but it's the greatest time to be alive as a believer. This is the greatest time to walk like Jesus is when we're in the darkness because he's the light and we have we have that and so that's that's why it's called hope street revival we're bringing we're bringing hope on hope street welcome to episode 122 of the nrt now podcast i'm your host jake and whether this is your first episode or your 122nd episode we're just so glad that you're here and spending some time here and if you haven't already, make sure that you are liking, subscribing, following, whatever that looks like on your favorite podcast platform. And bonus points for hitting the bell to notify you when a new episode comes out or you know sharing with your friends. So after seeing a band called Worth Dying For at Creation Fest Tour, I want to say it was either the late 2000s or the early 2010s, just became a huge fan. A few of their songs were some go-tos of mine, actually still are some go-tos of mine. And I went looking for them one day, and all of a sudden, I don't find Worth Dying For anymore. I see Fearless Band. What's going on here? After a little bit of research, find out that what Worth Dying For was is now Fearless Band. They became a church in L.A., in downtown L.A. And I first got the chance to connect with Jeremy Johnson back in 2020 when Fear Not came out, right at the beginning of the pandemic. And... Y'all, it has just been so awesome to see what God has been doing in this church, to see how they've grown, to see just the journey that they've had in downtown LA and just being the light in downtown LA. So I'm excited for you guys to hear this conversation with Jeremy Johnson. Let's go. We're here with Jeremy Johnson of Fearless Band. Jeremy, good to see you again. This is, It's been two years, I think. It was right when the lockdown started is when we got to chat last time. Wow. Well, yeah, the, time flies when you're having fun, huh? Yeah, or lockdown in your house or whatever it is. Or lockdown in your house and becoming a homeschool teacher and all that awesome. Yeah, we're in L.A., so obviously the lockdowns were a little bit more. Uh, they're intense for everybody, but they were just yeah. uniquely – intense for us in our loft with three kids so but we made it we made it to the other side man we we can be we can be stoked we made it and we we, we wrote some songs out of it let's just say that yeah. i remember when we did that episode you had to find whatever closet you could like tucked in there doing anything yeah. that you could begging borrowing pleading with the kids to just get anything done <laughs> yeah for sure i mean we lived in a loft so i think i was in the bathroom maybe or even in my car one of the two when we recorded it, but uh, I think you're in your closet. I think you're oh, okay. just nest- wow. nestled into your closet just a little bit and shoulder to shoulder <laughs> with the door in the wall and there you go. just hope there for the go. best. Hope for the best. Lock the door. I will have to say I am a little anxious about releasing this episode here because last time we released this episode, I got a direct message on Instagram from a guy. Kind of had a little bit of stalkerish vibes. Uh, okay. If you haven't figured out, it's probably you probably figured it was Nate by this point. But are you talking about Nate Parrish? Yeah. Oh, there you go. He was stoked about it, huh? Yeah, he was. A little bit of the backstory, if uh, you guys don't remember from way back when, or if you're a new listener here. So, Fearless Band was uh, way back in the day called Worth Dying For. Nate was one of your guitar player bass. Uh, I think he had a couple yeah. different roles in there. And so he was yeah, part of that totally. church. He's part of that band way back in the day when you guys were touring on like the Creation Fest tour. And yep. I knew I was going to do this, put myself on the spot with that album name that you guys released in 2011. It's just gone. Fear not. That's right. Yes. Fear not. And and what a great what a great anthem for that moment. It was like God gave us that that word. You know, not even knowing that we'd go into 
all the stuff that we that we've now walked through you know that was our anthem you know but now god has really released something new through us through you know after after you go through trials god produces new new fruit inside of the same tree and i think uh we we you know two years let's just say it this way two years through covid and lockdown in 2020 i think you know what i'm saying is like it's kind of like dog years, right? There, there's, a, there's a lot of years packed into those two years uh, for growth and maturity. And so this new project, I really feel like reflects that growth in us and, you know, maturity, even from those early days of, I feel now this album that we just released is how I felt about the beginning days of work dying for when we were creating a new sound. And now I feel like we're creating a new sound for our church. So we've been excited about that. Talking a bit about the journey, you had Worth Dying For. Yeah. You've grown different artists and different people like Nate and other people that have been able to be a part of this. And then in the early days of Fearless Church, when uh, when did you make that switch from Worth Dying For to Fearless and the Fearless Church? Yeah, you know, when we we moved here from being youth pastors in uh, Northern California, God was just just giving us fresh vision for everything, you know, and the name fearless came about because me and my wife have struggled with fear our whole life. And so we really felt like God was calling us to name our church something we had not yet become so that we would trust him to become that. And then also the name fearless was radical and positive. And I think before that, everything we named was radical and almost negative. We had an ammunition conference. It was radical and kind of negative in some circles, right? I, I love ammunition, but not everybody does, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, worth dying for and everything. And so I think it was like a, a moment of our life in history that we were saying, okay, now that we're fearless church, do we want to call our band worth dying for still? And um, it was kind of some new members and everything like that. And so we just said, you know, we're going we're gonna to change the name along with the church and even though that was like uh, maybe in all uh, senses of business or whatever it is, a bad decision, uh, because we had built such a fan base and name through Worth Dying For, and maybe people would lose us. They wouldn't find us again or whatever it was. We just really felt like, okay, if we're going to make that change, we need to make it now. And we just need to have confidence and not worry about all that and just, you know, now we're fearless. So we're going to name everything fearless, our conference, our uh, our band, our kids ministry. And so um, it's really the same, some of the same members and the same heart and the same DNA, you know, we were all part of that, but it's, but it's a new era, right? You know, I remember I had my hair cut a certain way when I was in third grade, and then I went to fourth grade and fifth grade and sixth grade, you know, I have a different hairstyle and that, you know what I'm saying? So I think styles of music change as our tastes change and as our church changes, uh, even the work dying for days, our, our youth group was made up of hardcore kids getting saved from an outreach we did uh, to hardcore kids. So like literally, you know, hardcore music kids, you know, we do an outreach every Friday night. They were getting saved. And then we, when we play our regular worship songs, they were like, just like, what is this? You know, uh, you know, and it was it was great stuff, but it just wasn't hitting them. And so worth dying for was birthed out of uh, making a sound that hit the people we were reaching. And so that's why I put screams in the band and double bass and and drop D and drop C and, you know, whatever, whatever we could uh, drop F, you know, so that we could unlock their worship. And we did that. And and God did that. And then we went to fearless LA and we were meeting in a nightclub. People were getting saved out of the nightclub. We were going and reaching out to the, to frat row, the party central of USC, UCLA. The music we were hearing there was more EDM hip hop ish stuff like that so we we integrated that into our worship and that's first first couple of cds out of fearless band and even recently god has done something brand new with our church and now we have a building i don't know how to describe it but our church is very very diverse every culture every background i think through the pandemic we just felt like god told us just to love and serve our community not to try to be right not try to be heard you know, all of us have politics, but we just yeah. felt like we weren't supposed to make our church about a certain political party or not. 
And we just felt like, man, we're just going to love and serve both. We're going to love and serve Republicans. We're going to love and serve Democrats. We're going to love and serve independents. We're going to love and just, we're just going to love and serve the city. And I feel like that's what Jesus would do. And so not that any church that's doing the opposite, that's their thing. That's what God's told them to do. But we felt like for us. And so because of that, lots of people started coming to our church that wanted that, that just wanted someone to focus on Jesus, that wanted someone to focus on the big issues, you know, where the Bible lines up, but like, Hey, let's, let's talk about something other than politics for a weekend, you know? And so we really pushed that hard and loved and served our city. I mean, I have people in my leadership that I know which way they vote and I seen them washing cars with the opposite bumper sticker or, you know, whatever it was. And it's just so beautiful. Our world is divided. Our, our, the United States are divided. You know, you can't divide in a room faster right now than talking about politics, you know? (laughs) And so even me talking about it right now, the ratings are going up. You know, <laughs> and so we focused on that. We focused on Jesus. We focused on souls. We focused on salvations, and our church just grew in all these different um, cultures. And so, Easter Sunday, we said, "Man, we want like a gospel choir in in our church." And nice. so, we found someone in town that had connections to a Sunday service, Kanye's gospel choir. And so we hired in 10 of those gospel choir people. We gave them an honorarium to come and just sing with us for the weekend. And we did one of our songs that we had written uh, that weekend. We showed it to the record label. We couldn't, we were trying to figure out our sound. We're trying to figure out, do we want to stick with this new EDM thing, but we're missing some of the guitars. We're missing some of the worth dying for edge and the punch and that. And then we just kind of, we, we did this Sunday service uh, on Easter Sunday. And, and, and I just felt like, man, this is it. This is worship. This represents our house, has the choir in it, has some guitars in it, has a little bit of all of it in it. And I showed the record label and they were like, that's it. Why don't we just write a whole album around this? That's what we did. We set off on a journey. We booked some friends in Chicago, the home of some great gospel we brought in different people from different camps, like uh, different gospel groups. They were either the keyboard player or the, we knew some, we brought in like 30 people in Chicago. We ended up writing in. So it's like this famous guy, Peter Cottontail studio. We had known his pastor. So his pastor got us a connect. So we're writing in Peter's Cottontail studio. Chance the rappers, you know, his brother's there in the other room recording. And we're like working with, Chance the Rapper's producer in there writing music with 30 different people in Chicago. So we wrote a few songs there. That was through Father's Day. Uh, Then we went over to Nashville and we wrote with some of the greats in Nashville. Some a guy that wrote like How Great Is Our God and Our God Is Greater. He's a part of our record label and this guy named Steve Fee. Um, And we ended up meeting this producer named Chad. We fell in love with Chad. We fell in love with the demos he gave us from the recordings. We're just like, dude, this is done. This is like a a full song. And so so we said, bro, I am, before that last CD, me and Josh, our drummer, were were the producers. So I, uh, me and Josh just stepped up and just did what we could. But we met Chad and, and we said, man, we need a producer. So he, he came on board. Chad played guitar for Israel, uh, Houghton. Uh, for years. So he's an amazing musician and producer. And so we wrote with him, wrote with these other guys, and then just kind of pulled these songs together and uh, picked 11 of them. Um, Just felt like which ones had the touch of God on it, which ones said what we wanted to say. We worked with Chad and we brought in that gospel choir and they sang on it. Through that, we were kind of doing this worship night. We wanted to call the worship night Hope Street Revival. And it's because our church is on Hope Street. So the building we have, it's uh, God's just doing something new in our church. It's grown bigger than it's ever grown after the pandemic. We gave out 4 million pounds of food during the pandemic. We just feel like there's a revival happening on Hope Street. You know, I I know what the news says about L.A. and California and both news stations. Right. And like the reality of if you just go drive around, it's chaos. I mean, I feel like it's so chaotic in my state. I just need to rent a Batman costume or buy one off of Amazon and just go start fighting crime. Like, I, I, you know, it's just crazy amongst all that, you know, or Aquaman, whichever, you know, whichever comes first Uh, amongst all that, you know, God's birthing a revival. His spirit is moving. People are getting saved. People are getting baptized every week. We have, uh, you know, a couple hundred visitors every week to what we're doing. And so 
you know, we wanted to do a night to honor God once a month in our church called Hope Street Revival. So we just started doing that, a prayer and worship night in the round in our cafe. And as we were doing that, we said, man, this CD, this album, instead, I always call it a CD, this album, (laughs) instead of just naming it a track from the album, let's call it Hope Street Revival. And because it's, it's on Hope Street, we're bringing hope and it's coming through worship and prayer. And so all those little music videos we're releasing, those are from just real nights of worship that we've been having in our church throughout this time. You know, these songs are songs we're doing in our church, not just songs to listen to or to work out to or to be on a playlist. Like these are songs that are our songs to the Lord about what we're walking through and what brings us hope in the midst of the chaos that we're walking through, you know? We should note that uh, I think we were talking about this on the last episode that you just bought the building. You were just getting ready to go into yeah. the building and then everything shut down and everything went bananas. Oh. So you guys yeah. didn't actually get to go into the church and start doing anything in the church oh. for a year or two. Everything was done outside. Yeah. All the food distribution, all that kind of stuff had to yeah. have been done outside drive through the whole no yeah. contact. Yeah, style. we did a drive through church for a little while. We didn't have any place to do it. Our parking lot wasn't big enough. So there was this parking lot under the freeway that was just abandoned. We couldn't get a hold of the owner, no answers, straight to voicemail. So after about a month, I said, Look, guys, I don't think they're going to answer. And you know what? I don't see a lot of people down here. So let's just cut the lock. <laughs> and so we <laughs> no. cut the lock. And I told him there's a story in the Bible where Jesus needed a donkey. And he said, all right, go into town and there's going to be a donkey sitting there. And if anyone asks you what you're doing, so (laughs) obviously he was just taking the donkey, tell him Jesus has need of it. And so uh, I kind of joked there, but like we cut the lock and we just started having church in this abandoned parking lot underneath the freeway and giving food out after church. And we did it in your cars. And then, you know, we've set up some bleachers because some people wanted to get out of their cars. And so more and more people kept getting out of their cars And I don't know if you know, but John MacArthur, um, who me and him don't line up on a lot of theology stuff, but but I do like the fact that he sued the city and the state and won and got us to be able to go back inside. And so all churches were allowed in California after he won that lawsuit to go back inside. And so we were allowed to go back in. I was just trying to, at a certain point, find out, okay, God, like after we're allowed, I'm not really trying to end up in the news. (laughs) You know, I'm not trying to you know, end up on screen. I'm just trying to help people. And so if you want us to go back inside and God really showed me a vision of my, during, during COVID, my mom had actually found out right before COVID that she had cancer. And it's actually why I have long hair. Uh, Cause I grew out my hair to, to cut it off, to give to her when she, I thought she was going to lose her hair. She ended up not losing her hair. So I kept it. You put all that work into it. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. She ended up, there became a certain point where the hospital had to decide, like, we're not going to wait any longer to see you because what's in your body is worse than COVID. You know, like the threat is worse than you catching COVID. She had to start her treatment, you know, and they had to learn how to be safe and do what they needed to do, but yet treat my mom. And so I started seeing that with people. I felt like I was speaking to me like, yeah, COVID's here, but there are people dying of worse stuff than COVID. So I just said, all right, God, I'm going to open up inside and we're going to keep the drive-in going. So whoever wants to come to the drive-in, they can listen to it in their car and wants to come inside. And so the first week, no one stayed in their car. Everyone came in. Nice. At first we were like trying to hold people in masks and do all that. And then we just felt like, you know what, let's just leave people alone. Let's let them do what they want to do. Who knows where they're at, right? Who knows how close this person is to suicide or what I would hate to scare them out of our church because they're not wearing their mask during worship. And so we just, just like let people do what they want to do. And man, it's just been a beautiful story of how God unraveled that. And like, we kind of opened before a lot of churches opened, but maybe after some churches opened. And I just felt like it was the right time for us with the Lord. I, I will never put a pastor down for when they opened late or early Hey man, I I got enough people judging me. I don't need to judge anybody else, but I just say for us, we felt like we listened to the Holy Spirit. If you were to come to Fearless on a Sunday morning, you would just sense this this different kind of freedom in LA than than just anywhere else you'd go. 
because, um, you know, there's just like a, uh, there's more to life than this moment, you know, and eternity hangs in the balance, you know, and so we baptize more people than we've ever baptized. We've seen more people saved than we've ever seen saved. But I mean, it's like God had to teach me that we don't need a building to do that. We don't, we don't need a nice facility to, you know, I think, I think from the years of not having one and being from nightclub to nightclub to finally have one after six years, it was like, became an idol. If I could be honest, a, a thing that I thought was going to be bring the breakthrough and God's like, no, I'm going to get the credit. No, the building's not going to get the credit. I'm going to grow this church with no building in a, in a borrowed parking lot through cars, you know, <laughs> so, in honking at the altar, you know, I had to wear in ears during that time because the honks were so loud for the amens, you know, <laughs> so, but you know, it is, it, we made it, we made it to the other side and we didn't miss a rent payment. We didn't, you know, people gave, people continue to give, people continue to believe people got behind us. The city started paying us. The city started paying us for giving out food because during that time of COVID, the people they entrusted to give out food were stealing it and selling it. Oh, no. And they caught them and they said, okay, cut everyone off. Give me two organizations that we can trust and we'll pay them to do what everybody else was supposed to do. And so they came to us. They heard about us of what we were already doing. We were paying as much money as we could to get this food and rent trucks. And they said, hey, can we pay you to give out food two more days a week. And so they started paying us a dollar a box, which we just took all that money and put it right back into buying more food and paying some team to do that. But it was just like the wealth of the wicked went to the house of God and the government, you know, was paying us to give out food, but only because we had been faithful with what we were given, you know, and they saw that. So anyways, it was just a, it's been a great time, man. In that time we got connected with, the mission in downtown LA. I mean, we have the biggest homeless problem probably in the nation besides maybe New York or San Francisco. We're maybe five blocks from Skid Row, which is, you know, 60, 70,000 homeless people a night. I mean, there's homeless encampments around our church that we outreach to. You know, we have homeless congregants that come. We have a guy in our church that he feels a need for homeless ministry. And so he literally goes to Skid Row, finds the worst off, person in skid row and ask them, Hey, can I give you a day away from here? And he takes them to his house. He gives them a shower. He buys brand new clothes, gives them to him, gives, he gave them new Jordans the last time. Oh wow! And then brings them to, brings that guy to church with him and it introduces them to me and prays with them. He has, he has a TikTok. He just put up a video of it, which was so cool. But then it just says, how do you feel? How, you know, how that, do you want to do this again? Do you want to come back with me? It, it's one thing to complain about the darkness we're in, but it's the greatest time to be alive as a believer. This is the greatest time to walk like Jesus is when we're in the darkness because he's the light and we have, we have that. And so that's, that's why it's called hope street revival. We're bringing it, we're bringing hope on, on hope street. Man, that is so incredible. And I know that we're at the point where we probably need to start, you know, wrapping up the episode. Cause I know you have other appointments yeah. and stuff, but I just want to touch really really briefly on just what you were talking about, just about coming together you know, and just being a place where Jesus is the focus. And I've just, just seen some really powerful things happen. Some friends of mine, Stephen McWhorter and Jason Claiborne have done that same thing. And just the impact that they have, uh, Stephen's a worship leader, Jason's gospel. And when they come together, there's just a certain power between the two of them that you just can't help but stop and take note of. And I yeah. love that that's coming in through not only hope street revival, but just within that church of just bringing that focus back to Jesus. Like, I don't care how you vote. I don't care what you believe, what you think. There's obviously a reason why you think that way. There's obviously a reason why you vote this way, but you know, I'm glad that you can think that way. I'm glad that you think differently than me, but let's agree on the one thing that's really truly important. Yeah. Um, Well, here, here's the deal. Like if we build our house, with any other foundation than him, then it will fail. That's our focus because he's the foundation. Not that we don't ever build anything else as we go. Not that we don't have classes that go deeper on topics or thoughts, or if someone asks us, 
hey, how should I vote on this? Or what would God say about this? It's not that we shy from those things, but we got to start with the foundation. If we're going to build a house, we can't start with the roof. We can't start with the fireplace. We can't start, you know, because I think God does care about politics. I think God does care about, you know, how, what we think about abortion and, you know, I just, I think God does care about all these things, but how will we ever build that if we haven't built the foundation? Foundation takes time. It takes, you know, and so here we are, we, we're, we're just going back to the foundation. We're just saying, look, all this other stuff, let, let's, we can have conversations. We can think one way or think the other, but, but let's just start with Jesus. Can we all just agree there? Can we learn about him? Can we learn about who he is and how he loved people? And, and, and really, to be honest, like when everything boiled down in downtown L.A., like I'm a I'm a white guy in downtown L.A. This is not like the, I'm a minority in the city I live in and president. And so a lot of times I just thought, God, you got the wrong guy. Like you got the wrong guy. Like I'm from a small town. I'm. I grew up shooting guns in my backyard, big trucks, like mullets, like this. <laughs> I'm from the country. Which mullets are coming back, so. Yeah, there you go. This is not like, I'm not the right guy. And God said, no, I didn't get the right guy, but you have the wrong focus. You're looking in the, the outward appearance of why I have you here. But I brought you here to love and to serve. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus loved and served. And because of that, he reached every culture in his day. Like there were people that followed him that were not his culture, that would come to him that that were opposite, different, like from different backgrounds and different cultures. And you look at every other rabbi and it was just the Jews, just the Israel, you know, but Jesus was, you know, that, that's why they were mad at him. He was hanging out with who they would say are, oh, those are sinners and tax collectors and these are Gentiles and these are, you know, but Jesus bridge those gaps and even further paul even further peter struggled with that you know but i think i think our church we want, we've always desired our church to be very multicultural but god is actually doing it now and it's not something we're striving to do or like is our only focus but we're just focusing on jesus and i think people are that's refreshing to people i wouldn't say we're a woke church you know there's the woke church that says, oh, we're just focusing on Jesus, but they're just afraid of talking about anything. That's not us. We're not afraid, but we're starting with Jesus. We're going to start with the foundation, and we're going to we're going to go after Him. And 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 all the songs are written from a place of inward focus of like, God, what are we going through? Like Holy Ghost is, I wrote that through a time where I, I was depressed and felt like taking my life, and that song came out of that. Everything came through a, a time at our cabin where we had a leader's retreat and I was going through some sickness in my body a second time and had some bad situations happen the first time. And I was just broken and, and feeling depressed about it. And, and that song came out, everything. The good life came out of a sermon series where we're like, Hey, we don't have to wait till COVID's over or things are done. We, we can have the good life now with God. I mean, welcome to Jesus. That's the, that's the foundation, right? Welcome to Jesus. And we're not trying to introduce you to us or fearless or a church. We're trying to introduce you to introduce you to him. He is who it's about, you know, and then courageous. That's our word of the year. That's the word God gave us for the year. And then if you haven't listened to note to self, you need to, because that's my note to myself that whenever I get discouraged or, or I, where I need encouragement, I'm going to go listen to that note. It's the note that you write to yourself when you're doing good for when you're doing bad. And so that's a spoken word that's on there. But I, I really think you got to just go listen to the album. You got to go listen from cover to cover. Listen to the whole thing. Put it on in your worship. Let it play in your car. I really feel like it's going to bless you. And uh, listen in for the choir parts. Listen in for some heavy guitars in there. We put we put some in yes, uh, yes. for old work time for fans. You know, we got some urban parts in there for, for our later fans. So anyways, I, I feel like you're going to love it. You just got to go listen to it. You got to go listen to it. And, and if, if a song blesses you, share it with a friend. And then when you're on YouTube, type in Hope Street Revival and check out one of our live nights where we're just doing these songs live with a prayer and worship time for like two hours. We're just worshiping and praying. And there's some like moments where we're flowing and just allowing God to move. Anyways. I think you should go listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, I've been sitting on it for a little while. Thank you for that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's been incredible. There's been a few songs that 
have come through that I just have been waiting for it to actually release. And I've been excited yeah. this whole time just watching them release one by one until, you know, the whole album released. And one of the things I think with new playlists and you, you talk about the CDs, you keep calling it CDs, you know, what yeah, we're used I'm to, so like sorry. you just, <laughs> well, until Napster, but we won't talk about that, but <laughs> you yeah. just throw the CD in the car and that's what you had, right? You had that CD from start to finish. Yeah. Some of these albums that come out, like there's just so much good stuff in the deep cuts and, you know, like track seven, track eight, and just down that, yeah. that range there, there's a lot of meat and there's a lot of good stuff there. So yeah. but like you said, I think cover to cover, this album needs just like the full, full listen treatment. I just really love the, the guitars, just the diversity of the sound and the album. I personally, I'm going to say, I agree with you cover to cover. Listen to this album. It's just, amazing yeah. yeah awesome thank you yeah i feel like chad was able to help us with our our range you know we have this song that's way out here and this song that's way over here and just create a seamless okay here this is why this song is going to fit this is why this song and so it, it does feel like you're, you're going on a journey personally when i listen to it even into same god which is just nothing because we were just like dude we're we're overkill right now on guitars. <laughs> Can we give us, I just want a violin. I just want a piano. So anyways, hope people enjoy it. You know, it took, it took, it, it really took us two years to create this sound and like to get to birth these songs, literally the, the Holy ghost song, you know, I didn't get to go into it deep, but that song, if you look at some of our, t- our Instagram and TikTok, you'll see the whole story there. But you know, I, I was going through some deep depression I have a, I have a shotgun in my house, you know, like I was thinking about the gun, you know, and literally called my wife and said, I need you to get home. I don't know what's happening. I don't know why I'm going through this. And since then learned a lot about those emotions and those feelings that I might feel from even my city or have to walk through things. But she had to rush home and literally part of the words in the song are the words she texted me when, um, you know, the next day I wrote that song after going through that. And only the Holy Ghost can come in in those moments and give you light in the middle of darkness. And uh, so if someone out there is just struggling with those kind of thoughts, I think Holy Ghost is such a just a, a song that you need to listen to. In the song, it says, don't you dare give up the fight. And that's what my wife told me. Don't you dare give up the fight. Don't you dare give up the fight. In other words, this is not just about you. You got kids. You got me. You got a church. You got people that look up to you. And in those times, sometimes you need someone to look at you and say that, you know, don't, yeah. don't you dare. So, and then even the guy who sang it, Hunter, he, he was on the voice, he was on the voice and uh, he was in our church and uh, he walked through those same kind of suicidal thoughts and times. And so that's why I had him as a guest artist on there. In fact, out of it, he got a record deal with uh, BC records tooth and nail, and he's going to be coming out with the whole worship album as well. So um, anyways, you're just creating new artists, new bands. We got Nate, we yeah, got Hunter. Let's we go, got, man. Not let's only go. is Fearless doing their thing and doing their albums, they're just pumping out artists at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Well, you see on there, there's one featuring LKD. LKD is our a rap group in house, and they're 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 going to release an album next month. So I have to get you that get you that stuff. Pretty cool, right? It's like worship rap. It's a new style too. So. Yeah. It's cool. Well, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for this album. Jeremy, just want to say thanks for just sharing the life that's gone into this album with us. And we look forward to seeing what more comes out off of Hope Street. Come on. All right, bro. Thank you. 